police are investigating a two-car crash on Woodruff Avenue near Bonita Drive that resulted in a vehicle being flipped on its side. The crash happened around 11 a.m. when police say the driver of a white Subaru tried to turn left from Woodruff onto Bonita Drive. A driver in the oncoming lane motioned for him to turn and he did when the driver of a blue van in the far lane didn't see him and collided with him, Idaho Falls Police Officer Brandon Harkness said. The van slammed into the car, pushing the car onto its side. The Subaru driver was able to climb out of his vehicle, and nobody was hurt, Harkness said. Police are investigating the crash. Traffic is backed in the area, and drivers are urged to use an alternate route if possible. Subaru WRX STI fans seem to connect with the brand's rally heritage and it's reflected in the color of the new performance sedans they buy. WRX enthusiasts pick another color as their favorite. What colors do WRX STI enthusiasts buy the most? The breakdown of the color composition ratio percentages for the performance tune WRX STI and Sport Tune WRX is interesting. Most performance brands sell more red or black performance cars, but Subaru sells many more WR Blue Pearl WRX STI performance sedans than the other five colors. Here's the color composition ratio. Here's the percentage of sales for each 2018 Subaru WRX STI color that is offered, Japan percentages. WR Blue Pearl, 46%, Crystal White Pearl, 24%, Crystal Black Silica, 14%, Ice Silver Metallic, 7%, Dark Grey Metallic, 6%, and Pure Red, 3%. Lapis Blue Pearl is not offered in Japan. There's a reason why WRX STI buyers are drawn to the WR Blue Pearl more than the others. It's because of the WRX STI's rally bred heritage. When it comes to the top auto colors, what is most popular with buyers of the 2018 Subaru WRX is surprising. The World Rally Blue, WR Blue Pearl, is not the most popular, and it's second from last in popularity. Red is associated with sporty performance cars, and you see lots of red sports car, but it's the least favorite among WRX buyers. WRX enthusiasts in Japan choose white more than any other color. The color composition for the WRX sports sedan is much different than WRX STI. Here's the breakdown, Crystal White Pearl, 39.2%, Crystal Black Silica, 20.4%, Dark Grey Metallic, 19.7%, Ice Silver Metallic, 9.5%, WR Blue Pearl, 8.9%, and Pure Red, 2.3%. The color composition is very similar in the US. If you see many more WR Blue Pearl 2018 Subaru WRX STIs on the road than any other color, it's because of Subaru's rich WRC history and STI buyers identify the car with it. You will see more white and black 2018 WRX performance cars on the road. When it comes to the top auto colors, WRX STI fans and WRX enthusiasts couldn't be more different. The 2006 Subaru Impreza WRX stunt car from the movie Baby Driver can be yours. The red WRX getaway car from the film is up for sale on eBay Motors now. And this is no ordinary WRX. It's been modified for the film and has been converted from all-wheel drive to a rear-drive configuration just for the movie. The AWD model was too grippy on the pavement, and stunt driver Jeremy Ferry needed to perform differently for the getaway chase scenes. Here's the details. It's a limited trim with 158,000 miles on the clock, has an upgraded 2.5-liter turbo boxer engine, a 5-speed manual gearbox, leather seats with sunroof, and black interior. The current bid is $8,000 one bid, and you have nine more days to bid on the WRX. The owner says, clear title 2006 Subaru Impreza Limited. Original color gray, CGM. The WRX being sold was used as a stunt car in the movie Baby Driver. 
This vehicle was converted to rear-wheel drive and received an upgraded rear differential as well as a 2004 STI Turbo. It was tuned by Doug Wilkes at DBW Motorsport. This vehicle was also used in the music video for Chase Me by Danger Mouse, Big Boy and Run the Jewels. It was also used by Subaru and Sony for the LA Premier Red Carpet event. This is a running and driving car. It does have some dings and scratches from the filming of the movie. The overall condition is good. You will need to arrange your own shipping and any costs incurred will be yours. The seller says they can assist in the pickup. If you ever wanted to own a movie stunt car, here's your chance. The 2006 Subaru WRX in Baby Driver is up for auction on eBay Motors now. That all changed in the 1990s when Subaru, treading a path previously forged by AMC with its four-wheel drive Eco, introduced the Outback. Named after Australia's famed desert interior, the Subaru Outback was intended to sop up some of the sport utility vehicle cash that was starting to fall from the sky and splash around the auto industry roughly 25 years ago. Without a truck or even a truck lit, in its lineup, the small automaker had to get creative in courting the adventure-seeking set, and what it eventually came up with would last well into the next millennium and eventually become the brand's flagship vehicle. 1995-1999 The original Outback years The version of the Subaru Outback that was introduced at the 1994 New York Auto Show was positioned as a trim level on the legacy wagon. Most current Outback owners wouldn't recognize the very first 1995 model year legacy Outback which lacked the additional ride height found on later versions of the car and was distinguished from the base legacy trend by its unique interior, two-tone paint job, and a factory luggage rack. It wasn't until 1996 that the Outback gained an SUV challenging 7.8 inches of ground clearance, along with tires better suited to gravel roads as well as the outsized fog lights that became instantly familiar to Subaru fans. Also in the mix was Australian actor and Outback pitchman Paul Hogan, of Crocodile Dundee fame, who would stick around for most of the decade. Under the hood, the legacy Outback initially offered a horizontally opposed 2.2-liter four-cylinder engine good for about 135 horsepower, while later versions of the wagon would graduate to a 2.5-liter unit that added an extra 30 ponies. All-wheel drive was standard, but not homogenous. If you specified a 5-speed manual transmission you benefited from a mechanical system that featured a 50-50 power split, while 4-speed automatic cars came with a front-wheel biased, electronically managed design. An interesting footnote to the first-generation Outback was its compact twin, the Impreza Outback Sport. Also released as a 1995 model, and available exclusively as a hatchback. The Outback Sport wrote marginally taller than the base model, and largely aped the outdoorsy styling of the larger legacy-based wagon, adding a non-functional hood scoop in the US. That spoke to the turbocharged Impreza WRX that was exclusive to Japan at that time. The Outback Sport would continue until the end of the third-generation Impreza's production in 2011. 2000-2004 the second generation leaves the legacy nest. By the end of the decade, there were two major changes in store for the Outback. The first was the addition of the SUS, or Sport Utility Sedan, which was the brainchild of Ernie Bach, a man who had taken a big chance on Subaru in the 1970s by purchasing Subaru of New England and building an empire that would account for a significant percentage of the brand's national sales as everyone from Vermont to Rhode Island fell in love with the brand's all-wheel drive offerings. Bach convinced Subaru's Japanese leadership that he could sell Udo's of four-door legacies simply by adding the Outback's plastic body cladding, raising the ride height, and emphasizing their rugged appeal, and after paying for a prototype to be built, he convinced the automaker to produce 300 examples of his SUS as a test case to sell to New Englanders near the end of the decade. The company allowed him to test out his theory for two years on the East Coast, 
during which he achieved so much success that Subaru was convinced to roll out an official sedan version of the Outback once the second generation design hit the market around. In addition to the Outback wagon gaining a four-door sibling, for the 2000 model year it also broke away from its legacy branding and became a unique product in Subaru showrooms. Longer, wider, and roomier inside than the model that preceded it, a revised rear suspension system added considerable additional cargo space to the Outback equation and helped it challenge traditional SUVs more directly. The new Outback also gained access to the brand's 3.0-liter flat six-cylinder engine, matched with a four-speed automatic, which pushed out just over 210 horsepower. The larger motor was made into a more robust electronically controlled AWD system that backed away from the 90s-10 front-to-rear power split associated with previous automatic transmission in favor of a 45-55 distribution. 2005 to 2009 Turbo Power Although it no longer wore the legacy badge, the Subaru Outback's development was still tightly coupled to that of the sedan and wagon, which meant it too, benefited from an all-new platform for the 2005 model year. Again the crossover grew bigger, but the real story was the addition of the Outback XT with its 2.5-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine adding a significant performance boost to the vehicle. Rated at 250 horsepower and borrowed from the Subaru WRX STI, the automatic-only XT offer a near 100 horsepower advantage over the, also new, base 2.5-liter naturally aspirated editions of the Outback. The lack of a clutch pedal might have kept some enthusiasts away from the Outback XT, but it's worth nothing that the crossover's auto box had graduated from a 4-speed to a 5-speed design for 2005. Despite its extra size, the third-generation Subaru Outback was also lighter than the model it replaced, and its handling and ride quality were also improved by way of the vehicle's revised suspension layout. Four-door fans were saddened by the loss of the SUS, which left the American market at the end of 2007. 2010 to 2014. Outback rose up. After years of fraternity with the legacy wagon, the Subaru Outback parted ways with its long roof companion after that model was discontinued from the American market. Also gone? The XT Edition's turbocharged engine leaving the 2.5-liter 4 in its wake but introducing a new 3.6-liter horizontally opposed six-cylinder good for 256 horsepower or roughly what the outgoing turbo had to offer. Also new, the option of a continuously variable automatic transmission and a six-speed manual for the four-cylinder driver train. Although the mechanical changes were important, a far more noticeable difference between this generation of Outback and the one before had to do with its size. Subaru went all-in when it came to styling the new crossover to better compete against the burgeoning crop of plus-size SUVs which were taking over the family car segment. The end result was a much larger version of the crossover that provided better interior room, more cargo space and another inch or so of ground clearance. 2015 present. More gear, more tech. When the revised 2015 Subaru Outback hit the scene, it wasn't nearly as dramatic a departure from the mold as it was in 2010, but it did mark the end of an era, as the legacy wagon that had carried on in other corners of the globe was sunsetted in favor of all Outback, all the time. Again the size of the vehicle grew, keeping it inside the footprint of the current crop of crossovers but still presenting as much larger than when it first debuted all the way back in 1995. Under the hood, the same engine pairing of four and six cylinder options continues on largely unchanged, although a continuously variable automatic is now standard for each. Subaru also invested in higher grade materials throughout the cabin and addressed long-standing complaints about its infotainment system while also adding a high degree of active safety gear through its eyesight suite of equipment. The Subaru Outback started its journey by presenting buyers with something outside the norm of what they could expect from other automakers, and despite having evolved into a more mainstream offering, it's still unique enough to serve as Subaru's strong selling brand ambassador. Is there a car company that's been better served by the market shift to SUVs and crossovers than Subaru? 
Probably not. But a key part of taking advantage of opportunity when it's presented is being prepared to do so, and the outback has been a key aspect of Subaru's growth strategy for the past two decades.